You guys seem to love the best player from every jersey ranking, so we're gonna run it back. But this time we're gonna be ranking the best MLB player from every state. We're gonna get started in alphabetical order and work our way all the way down through all 50 states. And just to clear it up, these are active players that have played in the 2023 season. So for any of you that want to comment of all time, no, no, this is just 2023 active players. So enjoy. Like I said, you guys seem to love the one before, so we're running it back. I've actually had this video queued up for a few weeks now. I've already had my list made. So it is about 1.30 a.m. in the morning, and um, I just wanted to make this video, so let's go. Getting it started with the best player from Alabama, we have a familiar name, Gunnar Henderson. This guy's a freaking stud. I've actually been able to talk about him in a few different videos now. I just can't shy away from him, but he is the best player from Alabama. This guy has a 6.3 baseball reference war, 28 homers, a 255 batting average, 82 RBIs, I'm filming this obviously after the Orioles did get swept in the playoffs, but they got a bright future ahead. Um, Gunnar Henderson is going to be a huge role in that, and I'm excited for this guy down the road. The best player from Alaska, fun fact, there is none. Moving on to the best player from Arizona. This one's fun. We got Cody Bellinger. This guy, obviously, 2019 MVP, two-time All-Star, Gold Glove, Rookie of the Year, but in depth of a little bit more of the 2023 season, he had a 4.4 baseball reference war, 26 home runs with a 307 batting average, and 97 RBIs, 525 slug, and an 881 OPS. This guy's just good. He is going to get paid this offseason. I obviously hope it's by my Chicago Cubs, but he he is going to run a very high market this year, and I'm actually very excited to see where he would land if it's not back with the Cubs. Coming in for Arkansas, we have another Chicago Cubs player, Drew Smiley. And trust me, this isn't because I wanted to pick him because I'm a Cubs fan. There weren't that many players to pick from from Arkansas. But Drew Smiley, believe it or not, was the best choice. Even though he put up a five even ERA. He started in 23 games, pitching in a total of 142 in one thirds innings. For the Cubs, he was a starter, right? I, at the beginning of the year, I thought this guy was going to be a huge part of our rotation. Well, he put up an 11 and 11 win-lose record. The Cubs ended up having to move him to the bullpen. He just was not reliable and it sucks because he ended the second half of 2022 so good. That's why the Cubs brought him back. Um, I really hope he can pick it up next season, but for this, he was like, believe it or not, again, the best option from Arkansas. Next, moving on to California. This is probably the most stacked state that there are to pick from. Examples like Aaron Judge, Nolan Arenado, Corbin Burns, Garrett Cole, and Christian Yelich. But my clear and obvious choice after so much thought is Freddie Freeman, a 2020 MVP, a three-time Silver Slugger, seven-time All-Star, but to dive in depth of just his 2023 season stats alone, he had a 6.6 .6 baseball reference war, 29 homers, a 331 batting average, which is absolutely insane, 211 hits, 102 RBIs, and um, I think runs are such a cool stat. Um, it really shows so much in a player. Uh, Freddie Freeman scored 131 times. And for a player that only hit 29 homers, that's insane. He hits, he gets on base, and he scores. A 567 slug and a 976 OPS. Moving on to Colorado. I got one of the Rogers brothers, Tyler. Tyler Rogers is the best player from Colorado. So he is a relief Pitcher, having pitched in 74 innings, posting a 3.04 ERA. Moving on to Connecticut, we have Toronto Blue Jays outfielder, George Springer. This guy, I kind of barely remember sometimes. I forget he plays for them. Um, he's dealt with the injury bug quite a bit, but actually remained pretty healthy this season. 21 homers with a 258 batting average, 72 RBIs. He's a two-time silver slugger four-time all-star. Overall, he was the best pick. I'm excited because these next three are going to be real exciting to talk about. Coming in for Delaware, we got St. Louis Cardinals first baseman Paul Goldschmidt. I mean, come on, just last season, MVP. Four-time gold glove, five-time silver slugger, seven-time all-star, and just this past season posted a 3.4 baseball reference war with 25 bombs, a 268 batting average, 80 RBIs. He walks a pretty good amount with a 12.7% walk rate. Coming in for Florida, which is basically California 2.0. Like California and Florida were the two most like jam-packed of talent. So from Florida, you have options like Pete Alonso, Manny Machado, Bo Bichette, Nicholas Castellanos, Jacob deGrom, Kyle Tucker, Trey Turner. Uh, the list goes on and on. But I got Manny Machado, six-time All-Star, Silver Slugger, two-time Gold Glove, and a Platinum Glove. So, you know, 
I like to highlight their career on those terms, but let's dive a little deeper like I've been doing. A 2.9 baseball reference war, but 30 bombs, a 258 batting average, 91 RBIs. And Manny Machado is like one of the best third basemen in the game right now. That's why out of all that talent, you know, he's the guy I went with. Next, moving on to Georgia, three players come to mind. Dansby Swanson, he was a Georgia native while he played for the Atlanta Braves. And then we got Zach Wheeler, and then again, another new Atlanta native, Matt Olson. He's my pick. I'm picking Matt Olson, best player from Georgia. I mean, this guy, dude, he is so good. He would probably win the freaking MVP if it weren't for his teammate, Ronald Acuna. And he's a quiet player. He really is. When he played in Oakland, he was still such a good player. Came to Atlanta, became sprouted out even more okay playing for a great team but he's had two silver sluggers won two gold gloves but Matt Olson has a 7.4 baseball reference war 54 homers league leading 283 batting average and 139 RBIs wow dude he only has eight career stolen bases are you freaking serious wow moving on to Hawaii I have okay Colton Wong <laughs> there aren't many people to pick from Colton Wong played for a long time for the Cardinals went to the Brewers and has now been playing for the Mariners. And then just this year got picked up by the Dodgers, but still not great, okay? Four homers, an under 200 batting average, a negative war. This guy is just, it's not there for him right now. I feel like ever since he left St. Louis, he just hasn't been that player. Next coming in for Idaho, literally very, very few to pick from, but I have Michael Stefanik from the Los Angeles Angels. Not gonna lie to you, never heard of him before. He played in 25 games with the Angels, had a 290 batting average, but only in 62 at bats. Basically, nothing to talk about with this guy, so you know I was desperate. Next, moving on to the best player from Illinois, my home state, I have Los Angeles Dodgers rookie, Bobby Miller. This guy had a pretty solid rookie season with the Dodgers. A 2.1 baseball reference war, a 3.76 ERA, a win-lose record with 11 and 4. He started in 22 games, pitched in 124 and one-thirds innings. It is unfortunate that he had to kind of, I mean, other than Kershaw, he has had to step up in the Dodgers rotation. But I mean, overall, this guy's solid. And to be honest, from Illinois, there weren't that many star players to pick from but he's my pick moving on to indiana two years ago i would 100 percent been sold on this pick but this year a little bit rocky but i have lance lynn from the los angeles dodgers obviously he was involved in a trade from the white Sox to the dodgers this season kind of i think like he was really bad with the white Sox, and then the dodgers kind of made him a little bit better but still these are his numbers. A negative 0.8 war, a 5.73 ERA. He was healthy and started in 32 games, but man, was he bad. A win-lose record at 13 and 11. Again, we're at the States, like it's so hit or miss. There's not too many players to pick from, but he's there. Moving on to another mid pick from Iowa, Michael Waka. To be honest, I take back the mid pick part, okay? He actually wasn't that bad this season. He posted a 3.22 ERA a win-lose record with 14 and four. Overall healthy 24 game starts, 134 and one thirds innings pitched, 22.4 strikeout percentage, a 7.8 walk percentage. Moving on to Kansas, we got Tampa Bay Rays relief pitcher, Jason Adam. So for relief pitching numbers, a 2.98 ERA, 12 saves, 54 and one thirds innings pitched, a 31.1 strikeout percentage, pretty solid. Coming in for Kentucky, Will Smith from the Los Angeles Dodgers. I definitely think this guy's a top five catcher in the league because for a catcher, it's hard to put up any better numbers than this. A 4.1 baseball reference war, 19 homers, a 261 batting average, 76 RBIs, and he only played in 126 games. I mean, coming from each state now, there's really like the average state there's not too many players to pick from but will smith was the clear and obvious favorite because this guy is actually worthy of talking about he's good moving on to louisiana i have philadelphia phillies pitcher maybe not for long Aaron Nola. yes he is now officially going to be a free agent he can sign with any team the rumors are chances are low that the phillies do bring him back but i mean anything can happen moving on to his stance a 4.46 era that's a bit higher than you would like to see. A 12 and nine win lose record, 32 games. So like having a healthy starting pitcher that pitches and gives you innings is very valuable to any team. So the fact that he stays healthy, that's a win-win. 
202 strikeouts. I mean, he pitched in 193 and two-thirds innings. And in the playoffs, this guy pitched really good. Him and Zach Wheeler being that one-two punch has been so much fun to watch these playoffs. I'm excited to see where he signs. He's the best player from Louisiana. Next, moving on to Maine. Fun fact, there's no active player from the state of Maine, so we're gonna skip that. So moving on to Maryland, we got one of the best like closing pitchers in all of baseball, Josh Hader. I mean, he's just one of those Padres players that were phenomenal this season, yet they all couldn't put it together. And maybe I'm a certified Padres hater because I feel like I mentioned that in every video that I've made about baseball. But okay, let's get into his stats. Five-time All-Star and just a three-time reliever of the year award, no big deal. But this season as a closer, put up a 2.4 baseball reference war, a 1.28 ERA, having pitched in 61 games with 56 and one-thirds innings pitched, 33 saves so it's kind of funny him having like 33 saves which is like great but he literally matches that with 32 holds so you kind of got your saves and your holds damn near even i just think that's very impressive too and also with a 36.8 strikeout percentage moving on to massachusetts we got san francisco giants player mike yastrzemski 15 homers a two 33 batting average, 43 RBIs, a 2.3 baseball reference war. Pretty solid. I remember like just two or three years ago, this guy uh, really like popped off for the Giants. Like he, he was part of that crazy 2021 season where all those players just like popped off. Moving on to Michigan, I have another Padres player, Jake Cronenworth. I mean, he missed close to 40 games this season, 10 homers, 229 batting average, just over hundred hits and 48 RBIs. Honestly, a bit of a down year. Moving on to Minnesota, we have Brad Hand. This guy's damn near played for every single MLB team. I mean, not really, but he's played for 10 different organizations, so that should be an award in its own. But basically, not many players to pick from at all, it's Brad Hand. He had over a five ERA. He pitched in 53 and two thirds innings. Yeah, Brad Hand. I mean, basically, he's a three-time All-Star, but like, this year was not a good year for him. So we're gonna move on to a player I'm really excited to talk about from Mississippi. I have Chicago Cubs starting pitcher, Justin Steele. This guy is, you know, runner up for Cy Young. He's gotta be. He has such a breakout year. As a Cubs fan, it was so much fun to literally watch him pitch this season. He got his first all-star nod. He put up a 3.8 baseball reference war, a win-lose record at 16 and five, a 3.06 ERA, started pitching in 30 games, stayed healthy most of the season. Pitched in 173 in one thirds innings, 176 strikeouts. Did not really walk batters at all with only a 5% walk rate and a 24.6 strikeout percentage. So I look at those and I think those are pretty good. But yeah, if it weren't for Blake Snell, I really think Justin Steele would be runner up for Cy Young. But I'm excited to see how next season will be. Uh, again, as a Cubs fan, okay, I want to see if he can match those numbers he'll be better or if he'll have a little bit of regression. So he's the best player from Mississippi for me. Moving on to Missouri, two players, Max Scherzer and Devin Williams. One's a very elite Hall of Fame pitcher. The other's an all-star relief pitcher. So, okay, Max Scherzer, wow, okay. I'm really going off stats based off the 2023 season alone, but as you guys can tell, I'm adding in awards that overall make that player the best player from that state. Max Scherzer is a three-time Cy Young World Series champ, but I'm not really counting the World Series in this. I guess I just did. An eight-time All-Star this season started in 27 games, going from the Mets to the Rangers. A 3.77 ERA, so that's a little bit higher than you would like, but I mean, he's Max Scherzer. He still struck out 174 batters, a win-lose record at 13-6. and six. He strikes out almost 30% of the batters he face. Max Scherzer is like the freaking go. It's so amazing to watch him pitch. Like he owns the mount when he does. So um, he's the best player from Missouri. Best player from Montana? There is none. Moving on. Moving on to Nebraska. Best player? Alec Bohm from the Philadelphia Phillies. His numbers, I mean, he put up 20 bombs, a 274 batting average, 97 RBIs. I would say he's like just an above average player, but... He was still like the clear and obvious choice, but yeah, he's still the best player from Nebraska. Moving on to Nevada, a couple years ago, two really good players to pick from. Bryce Harper, Chris Bryant. Well, Chris Bryant can't stay freaking healthy. So the other runner up would be Bryson Stott, Bryce Harper's bestie. But no, I mean, I'm just kind of toying with you guys. It's obviously freaking Bryce Harper. 
I need to get a Phillies one, but I got Bryce Harper from the Nationals right here. So sore subject. <laughs> so Bryce Harper, this guy is the freaking go. I absolutely love him. I'm not even a Phillies fan, but I've been rooting for them all playoffs. He is so electric. Even that whole Orlando Arcia thing. Okay, let's get into his stats, all right? Two-time MVP, 2015, 2021. Seven-time All-Star, and I'm just gonna tell you right freaking now, he's gotten snubbed the last couple years. 2021, when he won the damn MVP, he did not even get voted in as an All-Star. That, to this day, my cat just sneezed. Rookie of the year, home run, derby champ, whatever. That's just extra fun stuff. Two-time silver slugger. Like, this guy is just, he, he's got these stats. And um, if he continues at this pace, he's a Hall of Famer. I truly believe that. This year, 21 homers, a 293 batting average, 72 RBIs, a 3.7 baseball reference war, 499 slug, 900 OPS. Do you think I talked about him enough? He had a 14.7 walk percentage. Anyways, I'm a huge Bryce Harper fan, even as a Cubs fan. So we, we got to move on or else this video is going to be an hour long. Moving on to New Hampshire, a player that's not so much fun to talk about. Ian Hamilton from the Yankees, it looks like. I'm not going to lie to you. I've never, ever heard of this player. There were two MLB active players from the 2023 season. Uh, he was the best one. He had three game starts, total of 39 games. Pitched in 58 innings with 69 strikeouts. He had a 2.64 ERA. I'm surprised I've never heard of him, even if he just pitched this year. Moving on to the best player from New Jersey, the GOAT, Mike Trout. Three-time MVP, 11-time All-Star, Rookie of the Year, nine-time Silver Slugger, two-time All-Star MVP. I mean, okay. 2023 was probably the downest year he has had, okay? Battling injuries. A 2.9 baseball reference war, 18 homers, a 263 batting average, 44 RBIs. And it sucks because that was him only playing in 82 games. Literally give him another half season and you double those numbers. But last year, only having played in 119 games, he put up 40 homers and a 283 batting average. And he came in eighth in MVP voting, only playing in 119 games. So still missing 43. I think it'll still take Mike Trout another year or two or three for him to still miss games based off injuries for it to finally start affecting him. I mean, this guy for however many seasons, d a decade, okay, has been the like best player in baseball. So many people are still on this Mike Trout train and I don't think we plan to get off anytime soon. We all want the best for him. I want him to stay healthy and play, but let's just hope for the best for next season. Moving on to the best player from New Mexico, we got Houston Astros third baseman, Alex Bregman. He's a two-time all-star, silver slugger, for 2023, he put up a 4.9 baseball reference war, 25 homers, a 262 batting average, and 98 RBIs. But I think Alex Bregman is still just like a really dominant player. And that's, yeah, he's the best player from New Mexico. Moving on to the best player from New York, Marcus Simeon, second baseman for the Texas Rangers. <laughs> Okay, obviously you guys are watching this because I got the Marcuses wrong. I said Simeon instead of Stroman, so let's get it started off right. Coming in from the best player from New York, we got Marcus Stroman from the Chicago Cubs. This year, Stroman had a win-lose record at 10-9, and 9, a 3.95 ERA, started in 25 games. From March 30th to the All-Star break, Marcus Stroman was looking elite. He opted out to pitch in the All-Star game, came back from the All-Star break, and was not the same pitcher. Went on the IL, and in his last 11 game starts of the season, he put up over an eight ERA. He's a two-time All-Star, he's got a gold glove. He just opted out of the last year of the Cubs contract, so he will be a free agent. Moving on to the best player from North Carolina, Corey Seager. I mean, this guy's won Rookie of the Year. He's a four-time All-Star, two-time Silver Slug, World Series MVP, and just in the 2023 season, he had a 6.9 baseball reference war, 33 homers, a freaking 327 batting average, 96 RBIs, a 623 slug, and a 1013 OPS. I mean, these are like almost MVP numbers, given if it weren't for Shohei Otani, or if he just, he, he was injured a tad bit of the season. He played in 119 games. So if he was able to stay just about fully healthy, he definitely would have overrided Shohei Otani and MVP, especially with how Shohei Otani had to end his season like three weeks early, definitely would have given Shohei Otani a run for his money. Next, moving on to North Dakota, Philadelphia Phillies pitcher, Matt Strong. Pretty decent strong numbers for the Phillies, okay? 
as a relief pitcher, a 3.29 ERA. He did start in 10 games. He did pitch total 87, two thirds innings, 108 strikeouts. No, but based off what I'm reading, I mean, this guy is pretty solid. Moving on to Ohio's best player, we got Spencer Strider. I guess I was quite surprised to see Spencer Strider was from Ohio. He doesn't seem like an Ohio person to me. Don't know if that's a good or bad thing. He's a 3.4 baseball reference war, a win-lose record at 20 and five. So he led the league in wins, but that could be a big reason because he played for the Braves. Starting in 32 games, so he was very healthy with a 3.86 ERA, 186 and two thirds innings with 281 strikeouts. I mean, people call him like the strikeout king of this like year. I mean, he came in second of rookie of the year last season. He got his first all-star nod. Hear this, 36.8 strikeout percentage. That's why he has 281 strikeouts. Overall, really good. I think if he doesn't win Cy Young this year, which he's not gonna because of Blake Snow exists, he's definitely, I see him down the road winning at least two Cy Youngs. Moving on to Oklahoma, best player. I got JT Romuto from the Philadelphia Phillies. Probably like the best catcher right now, especially offensively. He's a three-time All-Star, two-time Gold Glove, and a three-time Silver Slugger. And just this season, a 3.6 baseball reference war, 20 homers, a 252 batting average. He stole 16 bases, which, you know, for a catcher, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. And 63 RBIs. I mean, just last year, he came in seventh for MVP. He's the best player from Oklahoma, which I was in fact surprised to see that he was from there. So that's something I've been learning about a lot of these players. Moving on to Oregon, my Baltimore Orioles catcher, Adley Rutschman. This guy is a friggin' stud. Another catcher. I think catchers are the hardest position to find a great player. And you get yourself an Adley Rutschman, you lock him up. He got his first all-star nod this season, posting a 4.3 war, 20 homers, 277 batting average, 80 RBIs. Moving on to Pennsylvania, we have Chicago Cubs outfielder Ian Happ. It's kind of funny watching Ian Happ 2021. I don't want to say it was like a down year, but he had a way better year in 2022 when the Cubs like went into that season, not supposed to be good. He was one of the limelights of the players that season. This year of 2023, not horrible, just a little bit of regression. Me as a Cubs fan, obviously I pay a little bit more attention to those types of things on like my favorite players, but I'm definitely looking forward to next season thinking he's kind of had a good year down year, good year down year. So I'm really thinking 2024 is going to be a really good year for him. He is a one-time all-star. He's the gold glover. He's a finalist for left field gold glove this season as well. But anyways, 2.9 baseball reference war. He hit 21 homers with a 248 batting average, but 84 RBIs, 14 stolen bases. He's got really good plate discipline. He stayed healthy, playing in 158 games, matching last year. He's got a 14.3 walk percentage. I'm a fan of Ian Happ, obviously, but he is the best player from Pennsylvania. Coming in for Rhode Island, we got Tampa Bay race pitcher Trevor Kelly. This guy only pitched in 10 games in only 15 innings. A negative 0.2 war. So that's about it for him. We're not going to highlight him. Coming in for South Carolina, Texas Rangers starting pitcher Jordan Montgomery. He got traded from the Cardinals this season to the Rangers. He has been shining these playoffs. Obviously, he's with the Texas Rangers, who won the American League pennant and are in the World Series. He's been one of the best playoff pitchers just this October. I'm pretty sure the Yankees said that they traded him because he wasn't a playoff pitcher, and here he is shining for the Rangers. I am pretty sure he will be a free agent after October, at least when the World Series is over. So he's making a really solid, like, you know, <laughs> campaign for himself. Like, I think he's gonna get paid. Anywho, he had a 4.1 baseball reference war, a 3.20 ERA. He pitched in all 32 game starts, pitched in 188 innings. I have watched almost every Rangers game this October. I've watched him pitch a few times. He is just shoving when he's on the mound. Anyways, he's the best player from South Carolina. Moving on to South Dakota. Again, no player from South Dakota. So moving on to Tennessee, which I don't know why this shocked me so much. We have friggin' Mookie Betts. He's an MVP, five-time Silver Slugger, seven-time All-Star, six-time Gold Glove, batting title. Mookie Betts is like, in my opinion, the depiction of an athlete. I mean, have you guys seen this guy bowl? I mean, come on. Mookie Betts is a freaking freak. And the fact that he played at shortstop and second base this year, uh, come on. But just to dive deep, he has an 8.4 baseball reference war, 
39 homers, which for him is a season high, with 107 RBIs, 126 runs, but he had a 307 batting average. Did I say that? A 579 slug and a 987 OPS, and a strikeout percentage only at 15. He's a freaking freak athlete. He is so much fun to watch. I mean, you love the guy on and off the field. He's got a podcast. I've tuned into a couple of them. You can really tell when I'm passionate about a player. Uh, because their presence, again, on and off the field is just uncanny. So, moving on from Mookie Betts, he's the best player from Tennessee. Next, coming in from Texas, we got Clayton Kershaw. I mean, he's won an MVP. He's a three-time Cy Young Award winner, ten-time All-Star, a freaking gold glove, and a five-time ERA title. He's a Hall of Famer, no freaking doubt. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame one day. Just this season, a win-lose record at 13-5, and five, a 2.46 ERA. He started in 24 games, pitching in 131 and two-thirds innings. I mean, Kershaw is just like one of the best dominant left-handed pitchers in the game. The guy is only 35 and he has over 200 wins with 210. But I saw something recently on a baseball page of there were like a list of all these different pitchers being between 35 and 40 that have still been pitching that are so close to 200 wins or they just got to it. And here you got Kershaw 35 years old with 210 and um, he ain't done yet. He has a career average over 16 years, a 2.48 ERA. This guy, insane. Moving on to the best player from Utah, Tanner Banks. He's pitched in 32 games, recording a 4.43 ERA, 61 innings pitched. I hate to say another player, I had never heard about him before this video. So yeah, he's the best player from Utah. Moving on to Vermont, there's no player from Vermont. So moving on to Virginia, we have Kate Upton's husband, Justin Verlander. Okay, MVP. I think it's like one of the most impressive things when a pitcher can win MVP. And Rookie of the Year, he's a nine-time All-Star, a two-time ERA title, three-time Cy Young. Just this season, he's had a 3.5 baseball reference war, a 3.22 ERA, 27 game starts, having pitched in 162 and one-thirds innings, and 144 strikeouts. He was another player traded from the Mets back to the Houston Astros. Anyways, Verlander's insane. We gotta move on. Moving on to the best player from Washington. We got four more guys. Two very solid options. And I, I haven't been doing runner ups too much, but I have to in this case. We have Corbin Carroll and Blake Snell. I had to include Blake Snell because he's probably gonna win the Cy Young for the National League. But no, my choice is Corbin Carroll. Just because it's only his like second year in the majors and he's managing to, you know, I mean, he's going to win rookie of the year. He helped the Diamondbacks get to the World Series and has been phenomenal in the playoffs. But just this season, he got his first all-star nod, of course, starting off the career right with a 5.4 baseball reference war, 25 homers, a 285 batting average, 76 RBIs, 116 runs. 54 stolen bases, 506 slug, and 868 OPS. He's an amazing fielder. He's a freaking 22. He's a freak of nature to watch. Um, like one of the, like the top two fastest players. I mean, yeah, he's the best player from Washington, no doubt. Moving on to West Virginia, we got Michael Grove from the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's a pitcher. He started in 12 games, pitched in a total of 18. He did put up a 6.13 ERA with 69 innings pitched. He did pitch in 2022 with 29 innings pitched. He was literally one of the only players to pick from, so that's why he's there. Moving on to the best player from Wisconsin, we have Seattle Mariners outfielder Jared Kelnick. This guy came up as a rookie. I remember watching his rookie game, okay, when he first got called up. I feel like he started off in the first couple games hot, and then uh, he kind of like uh, slowed down a bit. In 2022, he only had a batting average of 141. This year, Definitely stepped it up a lot. I mean, in comparison to 141 batting average to a 253 batting average and 11 homers, 49 RBIs, only 105 games played. Not too many players to still pick from from Wisconsin, but Jared Kelnick is like the favorite. All right, moving on to the last and final state from Wyoming. Who knew they made baseball players there? But we have a pretty good one right here. We got Brandon Nimmo from the New York Mets. This guy signed a pretty nice extension with them. He's going to be that guy that you look at and he's just like has played for the Mets his whole career. Really solid. He has a four war, 24 homers, a 274 batting average, 68 RBIs, 466 slug, 
and an 829 OPS. He walks 10.9% of the time, but Nimmo was one of like the limelights of their season. So he's definitely like a good player. But yeah, guys, that wraps up my list. Just like ranking the best MLB player from each jersey number, this is a video I wanted to make, but to tell you the truth, way easier to make in production because it's literally half of the players I was talking about. I went from zero to 99, which was 100 players, to just 50. But I still really hope you guys enjoyed this video. You guys definitely seem to love that video and thank you guys so much for all the support on those videos. I knew I had to get back on and make another one for you. I don't plan on stopping, but sometimes, you know, I um, I try to focus on other projects and the baseball ones because they are so time consuming, there may not be as many of them in a short amount of time. Leave some comments down below. I like having discussion in the comments, seeing your guys' takes, your guys' opinions. And I was just also talking about, there are so many players I'm not able to talk about in this video like Shohei Otani, Ronald Acuna Jr. Juan Soto because they're not from the US. Many more videos to come. Comment down below video ideas you guys have. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Just take a little bit more time to make and edit. So any like and subscribe means the world to me. So on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.